In late 1933, the first two Hatsuharus began trials. Yeah, immediately the last six were cancelled and reordered along with four more as the moderately better 10 ships of the 1,685-ton Shiritsoyu class. For the most part, these ships were repeats of the final pair of Hatsuharus, which is to say they were mostly repeats of the Hatsuharu class after both rebuilds. The only major difference was while the Hatsuharus ended up with two triple torpedo banks, these ships had two quads. Also, their guns could elevate to 75 degrees because the Japanese hadn't quite given up on the idea of their 127mm 50 caliber guns being good heavy anti-aircraft, despite their training and elevation speeds along with a total lack of adequate fire control. As a result, like other destroyers, once they got into 1943 and realized the war wasn't going to be short and their air and submarine threat was bad and would only get worse, they were refitted, usually as they came in for repairs. This mostly involved adding radar, more depth charges, removing the forward torpedo bank reloads, and exchanging the single turret for more medium anti-aircraft. Too bad it was the 25mm. Again, how a navy that pioneered the mass use of carriers and the coordination of their air groups could so badly drop the ball on adequate medium and light anti-aircraft is astonishing. Even setting aside their inadequate hitting power and fire control, just the technical problems with the 13 and 25 millimeter guns and how the navy doubled down on them instead of replacing them like the U.S. did with the 50 cal and 1.1 just makes me want to thank the Japanese for their contribution to the American war effort. If I can continue going off on a slight tangent here, just indulge me. I promise it'll make some sense. Like most destroyers in the Japanese Navy, these ships were meant to bonsai charge the U.S. battleships, probably at night, using their torpedoes to soften up the battle fleet for the great decisive battle the next day. But they never did that, did they? That's odd. Instead, they used their carriers to soften up the U.S. battle fleet at Pearl Harbor. But instead of changing their plans to fight the enemy they were going to be facing, air power, they continued to plan to fight a force they had already taken off the board. That's even more bizarre. It wasn't until after their highly trained pilots had been slaughtered in 1942 and American air power began to really start growing in 1943 that they started their program of putting more anti-aircraft guns on their ships. I guess that makes some sense, even if it was too late. Then in mid-1944, when it became obvious their fleet wasn't getting any more meaningful air cover, they really started plopping AA guns on their ships. Again, I guess that makes sense. But they apparently didn't have serious conversations about how effective their light and medium anti-aircraft was neither then or earlier. This was despite seeing what truly effective light and medium anti-aircraft could do, especially at Santa Cruz, which I would say was the real last time Japanese and American carriers met as equals. There are more than a few accounts of what few Japanese pilots returned from that battle being ground down to a state of lethargy by the volume accuracy, and hitting power of American anti-aircraft. But they never seemed to get that they needed to revamp the quality of their anti-aircraft, not just the number. Maybe it was Japan never had anything equivalent to the King Board. For those that don't know about the King Board, let's cover it real quick because it was very important. In mid-1940, a board headed by future Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Ernest King, was convened to study the effectiveness of British anti-aircraft at Norway. The upshot was that quote-unquote modern anti-aircraft was almost totally inadequate, both in quality and quantity. It might have been okay against a few biplanes, but was far behind the curve when it came to the all-metal mono-wing thousand plus horsepower engines of the Luftwaffe. The eventual result of their findings was, among other things, 
the replacement of the 5 inch 51 for twin 5 inch 38 on the rebuilt standards. As always, availability permitting. It also eventually led to the adoption of the 20s and 40s in place of the 50 cal mod Duces and 1.1 inch Chicago pianos and the jamming of as many of them on board as possible. In fact, the 20s and 40s were considered so important that in 1941, production actually began before the license agreements were finalized. It was due to the work of the King Board that American anti-aircraft really started cranking up in late 1942 and just got better and better. And few people have even heard of it. I guess we should also thank the British for turning over their lessons learned at Norway and Crete. Schert Soyu was started November 14, 1933 and was completed August 20, 1936. Shiguri was started December 9, 1933 and was completed September 7, 1936. Murasami was started February 1, 1934 and was completed January 7, 1937. Yaduchi was started October 16, 1934 and was also completed January 7, 1937. Samadiri was started December 19, 1934 and was completed January 29, 1937. Harusami was started February 3, 1935 and was completed August 26, 1937. Kawazi was started April 25, 1935 and was completed April 30, 1937. Yumikazi was started May 4, 1935 and was completed May 31, 1937. Yumikazi was started May 25, 1935 and was completed June 30, 1937. Suzukazi was started July 9, 1935, and was completed August 31, 1937. Main armament was five of the standard 127mm 50 caliber guns in two twin and one single turrets. Again, these guns could elevate to 75 degrees. One twin turret forward on the forecastle, a single turret aft, back to back of the dual turret three on the main deck level. Torpedo armament was two shielded quadruple torpedo banks, one on a stand between the two funnels with two reload lockers behind it on either side of the rear funnel. The second was behind the rear funnel lower on the main deck with a reload behind it in the aft superstructure. This gave a maximum load of 16 Type 90 610 millimeter torpedoes. 18 depth charges were initially carried, but again, they had no sonar as completed. By the start of the war, though, Type 93 sonar had been fitted. Propulsion was provided by three boilers, each in its own room, end to end. The first two vented to the forward funnel, with the rear one venting to the rear funnel. These provided steam to the two turbines, each driving one of the two propellers, to generate 42,000 horsepower for a speed of 33 knots. Major modifications mostly waited until well into the war, mostly being done as they came in for major repairs. Kawakazi landed her single 127mm gun in exchange for more medium anti-aircraft, Type 22 radar, and an increase in depth charges to 36 while undergoing repairs from March through May 1943. Haru Sami landed her single 127mm gun in exchange for more medium anti-aircraft, Type 22 radar, and an increase in depth charges to 36 while undergoing repairs from May through July 1943. Yumikaze and Suzukaze landed their single 127mm gun in exchange for more medium anti-aircraft, Type 22 radar, and an increase in depth charges to 36 while undergoing repairs from October through November 1943. Shiret Soyu landed her single 127mm gun in exchange for more medium anti-aircraft, Type 22 radar, and an increase in depth charges to 36 from mid-November to mid-December 1943. 
Samadiri landed her single 127mm gun in exchange for more medium anti-aircraft, Type 22 radar, and an increase in depth charges to 36 while undergoing repairs from December 1943 through January 1944. Shiguri landed her single 127mm gun in exchange for more medium anti-aircraft Type 22 radar and an increase in depth charges to 36 while undergoing repairs from March through May 1944. Shiritsuyu started the war in home waters attached to the battleships. Next, she took part in the Battle of the Coral Sea. In June, she was part of the Aleutians invasion force. At the end of September 1942, she was sent to the Solomons, and while she did several Tokyo Express runs to Starvation Island, she managed to miss all the big battles around the canal. After running troops to Buna at the end of November 1942, she was heavily damaged by a bomb. Repairs back at Japan would last until the start of August 1943. At the start of November 1943, she took part in the Battle of Empress Augusta Bay, where she was damaged, mostly in a collision, forcing her back to Japan for repairs until the end of 1943. While passing through the Surigao Strait in mid-June 1944, on her way to the Battle of the Philippine Sea, she collided with one of the tankers she was escorting, which set off her depth charges. Shiguri started the war in home waters attached to the battleships. Next, she took part in the Battle of the Coral Sea. In June, she was part of the Aleutians invasion force. At the end of September 1942, she was sent to the Solomons, and while she did several Tokyo Express runs, missed all the big naval battles of late 1942. Not so for late 1943. In early August 1943, she took part in the Battle of Vela Gulf. In mid-August, she took part in the Battle of Horioni. At the start of October, she took part in the Battle of Vela Lovella. At the start of November, she took part in the Battle of Empress Augusta Bay. On February 17, 1944, while she was at Truk when carrier aircraft raided the base, damaging her. With repairs back at Japan completed in mid-May, she transferred to the East Indies and escorted the carriers at the Battle of the Philippine Sea. At the Battle of Surigao Strait, she was the only ship from Southern Force to survive, though heavily damaged. Repairs back at Japan would last until mid-December. While sailing east of Kota Baru on January 24, 1945, she was sunk by the submarine Blackfin. Murasami started the war as part of the Philippines Invasion Force, then moved on to the East Indies where she took part in the Battle of the Chava Sea. Next, she took part in the Battle of Midway. She was at the first naval battle of Guadalcanal where she was damaged. Following repairs, she was sunk at the start of March 1943 at the Battle of Blackett Strait. Yaduchi started the war as part of the Philippines Invasion Force then moved on to the East Indies, where she took part in the Battle of the Java Sea. Next, she took part in the Battle of Midway. She was sunk at the First Naval Battle of Guadalcanal. Samadiri started the war as part of the Philippines Invasion Force, then moved on to the East Indies, where she took part in the Battle of the Java Sea. Next, she took part in the Battle of Midway. She was at the First and Second Naval Battles of Guadalcanal. Her next major battles were Vela La Vela, and then Empress Augusta Bay, where she was damaged in the collision with class leader Shiritsuyu, sending her back to Japan for repairs until mid-March 1944. Next, she escorted the carriers at the Battle of the Philippine Sea. On August 18, 1944, she grounded on a reef near Palau. A week later, she was sunk by the submarine Batfish. Harusami started the war as part of the Philippines Invasion Force, then moved on to the East Indies, where she took part in the Battle of the Java Sea. Next, she took part in the Battle of Midway. She was at the First Naval Battles of Guadalcanal. On January 24, 1943, she was heavily damaged by the submarine Wahoo. Repairs at Japan took the rest of the year. In February 1944, she was only lightly damaged when carriers raided truck. Near Manatwari, 
on June 8, 1944, she was bombed and sunk. Yamakaze started the war as part of the Philippine invasion force, then moved on to the East Indies. In late January 1942, she was part of the Battle of Balik Papin. At the end of February, she took part in the Battle of the Java Sea. Next, she took part in the Battle of Midway. Near Yokosuka on June 25, 1942, she was sunk by the submarine Nautilus. Kawakazi started the war as part of the Philippine invasion force, then moved on to the East Indies. In late January 1942, she was part of the Battle of Balik Papin. At the end of February, she took part in the Battle of the Java Sea. In June, she took part in the Aleutians invasion. In August 1942, she escorted the troop convoy that the Battle of the Eastern Solomons was a cover for. In late October, she took part in the Battle of Santa Cruz. In mid-November, she was part of the barroom brawl with the lights turned off that was the first naval battle of Guadalcanal. At the end of November, she was at the Battle of Tassafaronga. At the start of February 1943, she was part of the Guadalcanal evacuation force. At the start of March 1943, she collided with a cargo ship, so had to head back to Japan for repairs that would last until the end of May 1943. Back in the Solomons at the start of June 1943, she was sunk at the Battle of Vela Gulf. Umakazi started the war as part of the Philippine invasion force, then moved on to the East Indies. In late January 1942, she was part of the Battle of Balik Papin. At the end of February, she was escorting the transports at the Battle of the Java Sea. In June, she took part in the Aleutians invasion. In August 1942, she escorted the troop convoy that the Battle of the Eastern Solomons was a cover for. In late October, she took part in the Battle of Santa Cruz. In mid-November, she escorted the troop ships during the Naval Battle of Guadalcanal. While escorting troops to Buna on November 18, 1942, she was bombed and headed to back to Japan for repairs that would last until the start of March 1943. At the entrance to Truk on February 1st, 1944, she was sunk by the submarine Guardfish. Suzukazi started the war covering the Philippines invasion, then moved on to the East Indies. At Starring Bay on February 4th, 1942, she was mangled by the submarine Sculpin, sending her back to Japan for fix-em-ups. Repairs lasting until mid-July 1942. At the Battle of Eastern Solomons, she escorted the troop convoy. Next, she took part in the Battle of Santa Cruz. During the naval battles of Guadalcanal, she again escorted the troop transports. At the end of November 1942, she took part in the Battle of Tassafaronga. At the start of July 1943, she was at the Battle of Kula Gulf. Near Panapi, on January 25, 1944, she was sunk by the submarine Skipjack.